Welcome back, folks. Uh, last segment here of the Bullpen Cafe. We've got our potato mash, which is already uh, brought together. We had the guys trying it off camera. Uh, thumbs Good. up? Yeah. Love okay. It. Only thing I did was added a little bit of fresh chives into that as well. Uh, just to kind of, we got a little butter, a little chives, a little uh, roasted garlic in there. So that's done. We've got our corn, which is just finishing up over here on the side skillet. Give you guys a little smell of what's going on there. It's again a little Excellent. Uh, little butter, a little bit of chili powder, a little bit of brown sugar, and then what you do is you're pulling it off just at about this moment when you're getting a little bit of that crust on it and to where it starts to kind of just candy up a little, and that's where the sugar comes into play. So we've got that. We've actually got our ribs, which are now ready to pull off as well. So we're going to be bringing those off. Um, you guys, one of the things that we were just talking about in the break here, I think that, you know, a lot of times in the whole flow of sports, things that get overlooked are the job that, especially in the academic setting, the coaches have to do to keep their players on the field. And I just think that something was brought up to us during the break, and I think that it, it just needs to be mentioned because it needs to be commended. Now, Justin, tell me what, when you came into the program, what was the cumulative team GPA for, for the program? Uh, it was a 1.57. And, and what does it stand at now? Uh, well, we'll have to go back and add up all the freshmen. Um, I'm sure it's probably above a 2.0. I know it was a 2.53 uh, at the end of last semester, but, uh, you know, the way schedules are set up, our kids get off to a very slow start, so it's really tough to bring them home at the end of the semester. Yeah, so absolutely. We're going to be scratching and clawing to, to, to work on it. When I was at Reedley, uh, we every semester we went up at least a tenth of a point, and that was kind of a goal to, to improve. And we reward the kids with barbecues or something fun. You know, we yeah. made our team GPA. We're going to go up, and you know, the kids look forward to it, and you know, they, they know the number, and they're trying to beat it. Now, does it? Do you find that it also? it helps with their focus on the field do you find is there kind of a parallel when you're getting players to be a little bit more in tuned in the classroom is it spilling over to the playing field as well you know winning teams are teams that are serious you know the kids are serious uh, the first time I went to Sunnyside I, I, our kids couldn't hold their attention for 10 seconds you know it was really a tough deal we would practice holding our attention you yeah know, listening and, and we started from scratch and you know now they're much more serious but you know that's not where it needs to be and it's going to take time but uh, yeah, I believe there's a strong correlation between you know the maturity of the kids in the classroom and on the field that goes hand on hand. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. You know, it's again uh, one of the themes that I keep bringing up, um, even as I've been leading up to the show, is I just wanted to promote the fact that I was, you know, going to be leaving you guys with an inspirational meal. You know, something that's just going to you know, set the heart and mind to glow and get you ready for that game tonight. And I even mentioned this to Coach Evans the other night. I, I, I'm a big movie buff fan, and so I've got, you know, literally hundreds of movies and scenes of movies that just sit in my head as useless <laughs> information. But one of the particular things that I mentioned to you the other night was um, that great, you know, I was looking for an inspirational movie to draw upon. And so one of the Rocky movies came to mind, and specifically the one that did was Rocky IV. And I, uh, like I told the Coach Evans, and I'll, you know, pass this along to you as well but remember the scene when rocky hits drago for the first time and everybody in the and you know all the russian fans just lose it and you're like oh my god you know the big russian is cut and you know it's again it's um i i love i'm a fan of upsets and even more so you know old alma mater or not i would just i'm rooting for you guys Thank to you. pull off uh, one fantastic upset and i think that that's the great thing of moments like that, you know, and again, we're not talking about a boxing match here, but, you know, the, the notion is the same, is that everybody was caught looking the other direction. I mean, they thought that this wasn't going to happen, and again, if you can catch a team in that moment when they're backpedaling and tripping and they're just not ready for it, you know, amazing things can happen. And again, I just, you know, I can't thank you guys enough for coming on to the show today. And I hope that what we're about to cut open right here is going to be, uh, again, all the inspirational juices you guys will need to then pass along to your players. And then knowing at the first kickoff tonight at 730, we will be halfway through this episode. So we'll be probably somewhere around potato preparation, corn things. You guys can just remember, you know, I'm sure that'll be in your head and yeah. kickoffs. <laughs> mm, I remember that barbecue earlier today. So. That's how the game goes. I might be thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we will, let's get these ribs cut open. I'm going to move this off to the side real quick so that we can see what we're doing here. And I'll push these off. Let's, as you can see, we've got our bones sticking through. These ribs are done and beyond done. And actually, we're going to do a little cut this way so we can keep the tops. That uh, looks good, Jody. Sure does. Smells good. <laughs> oh, here, there is truly only one way to 
find out how this is going to turn out. So I'm going to hand a bone over to each of you guys. It's wow. a little hot, and I'll join in on you as well. And mm. my my uh, fiance in Spain is an, an expert cook, and she would love this. Mm. Viva España! She's watching, <laughs> by the way. So as those are finishing, what I'm going to do at the same time is I'm going to pull the uh, corn off. And what we will do is we will actually just serve ourselves up with a little, a little plate for our Friday afternoon feast here. Now is this, of all the, you know, I haven't seen your guys' full schedule this year. Is tonight's game, is, the, is this the most fun for you guys? I mean, given you know some of the ties to where the you know history and whatnot is this the most fun game of the season or you know what <laughs> it depends how it turns out um, <laughs> sometimes, exactly it, sometimes right. it can be uh, i'm a big fan of uh, you know we just try to get to the playoffs and win those playoff games mm -hmm. and those have a lot of value um this one is going to obviously have value for a lot of different reasons but um i tell our kids there's three parts to a season a preseason a season and a postseason and we started off zero and three and finished two and three in the preseason and now we're one and zero in league, so that's a that's a great uh, great record to have to keep it going alive. And if we could be two and zero, you know, uh, to be a team that wasn't even mentioned with the other teams in this league would be would be great. Yeah. Now uh, elaborate on that a little bit. You guys, I mean, was there just no mention of you guys as last in the CMAC? I I still get letters from Memorial and um, you know uh, boosters. I donate money and help out and try to you know. And uh, in the league, they oh. didn't even mention Sunnyside, so. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, I was, I was use that as motivation for our kids and say you guys aren't even mentioned in here, and uh, you know I thought about writing something back and saying something, but we'll just see what happens tonight. You know? yeah. yeah, and actions on the spill uh, yeah. speak louder than yeah. anything. So, yeah. Um, yeah, as we're also wrapping this up, you know, this is something that I didn't mention to you guys before, but um, you and I both have a common denominator in this that we both played for Coach yeah. Evans at one time or another. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, I wanted to finish this out by saying, you know, do you have a favorite Coach Evans moment? And I, I'll go back to the playing days. I, you know, I see if there's there anything from your days that stuck out from, you know, again, because yeah. it, I see it come full circle that you would bring, you know, Coach Evans onto your staff with you. So you obviously feel the influence of it. But I'd, I'd like to know a favorite Coach Evans story. From Nothing he can mention on the air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'll have a coach. I'll give you a Coach Evans look. It's funny that you say that is because when I tell people on Sunnyside and, and coaches coaching with me, they always give me their story. Oh, I, Coach Evans did this. And it has a, they have a great story for it. But I just have a look. And our kids... Um, over the summer, we scrimmaged Bullard, and he was in his element and doing his typical things. And our kids really responded, and I was hearing them talking about it. They really liked it. But, uh, you know, when his eyes go red and then his mouth gets a little bit dry and his forehead gets wrinkled, you know, I, I think that's a look that's we're trying to – Yeah. But, and that's, you know, because, again, I was thinking about this last night and this morning as well, and it's like I don't think I can go word for word with some of the exact things that were, yeah. that were mentioned. But, again, that was – my favorite memory of Coach Evans, because again, when you were coaching me on JV baseball, though, is we had that one, or would have been my freshman season, where we had that winning team. And I mean, I looked at that as a group of, we were kind of the bad news bears to begin with. There was no cohesiveness. I mean, we were just all individuals kind of going around. And I mean, he was so diligent in those moments of, like you said, with, you know, kind of, he beat it into us. And not literally, I'm not, <laughs> nobody's here pressing charges, but I'm saying that he literally worked for us to know that we were all in it together. We either, we sank or swam as a team. And, you know, it was moments like that, that to me rubbed off a long way as to how I went, you know, playing beyond those years, because again, I always, you know, was I always had it in the back of my mind because not many coaches really got into our players' space. You know, most coaches would say, "Hey, if I can't do the job, I'm just going to go on with it," because I felt that way during the time there. But Coach Evans was making sure that when the day was done, you guys were either going to get it or you were going to do, or you were maybe going to do a couple laps, you know and think about it in the meantime but again uh, you know i just think it's you've done a fantastic job through the years um with the various programs and the you know you've had done a lot of great work for kids and you know it just it does my heart good to see that one of your former players who when he gets his own program set up that then comes back and you know comes back to the master to bring him in to i'm not a master <laughs> I, uh, I i can say this without patrimony uh 
and your baseball teams that coach, I learned more from the players um, than you guys ever did for me because baseball was not my forte. We won because uh, <laughs> you guys knew the sport and I you know, could manage people. And with Justin, you know, one of the most disciplined, hardworking, tough kids I've coached. And, and uh, any coach will tell you, when you have kids that are intelligent and they're tough and they're dedicated, you don't have to coach. Yeah. All you have to do is put things on the board and, and you succeed. Now, uh, yourself as a former player of Coach Evans, when you uh, when you reached out to him, what what is your thoughts of, of bringing him into your program? What do you see that he... Uh, well, I, I was a little selfish because I don't know when Pat had the last... When was your last losing record? I, everything he does, they win. You yeah. Know, whether it's baseball, girls, soccer. Almost. Just, uh, you know, it, it, he finds a way to get it done, and you figure... You know, he's been the Bullard, been to different programs, and it's it's worked. And um, one of the things that you know was uh, on my table was to clean some things up and be disciplined. And I couldn't think of a better job or a better guy than him to do it. Yeah. You know, so uh, he was one of those first phone calls, and I I think I got a no. Did I get a no at first? You got a maybe. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> so I knew I knew that I'd have to hit him up more than once, but I knew once he was out there, we would see. And uh, you know, we we see our, our secondary. We have yet to to be beat deep in a game and, and he coaches it and, and they're disciplined and, and then they know exactly what's expected of them. And uh, you know, we, we we always talk about not giving up big plays and giving ourselves another shot and when he coaches we have a shot at that, you know, yeah. kids aren't giving up and, and they understand what's going on and you know, it's because of him. Well and that's the unique thing about football in itself is that, uh, you know, more so than other sports, you're you know, when they leave your linemen or your linebacking core, then they move on to another position. And I'm sure in most cases they're each coached by different people. So then the beauty of it is yeah. being able to bring that whole defense together on one cohesive unit. And yeah, being on the same page is a lot. Um, we've moved kids. Uh, our rotation, we're starting to click now, but our rotation has been different, you know, for, especially the first few games. We have kids playing, you know, we're DBs, and now they're defensive linemen, you know, and moving around. Yeah. Because we want speed on the field, and kids are kind of settling in now, and I think we kind of have where we want the kids. There might be an addition here or there, but you know, we're excited about where we're at and the improvement we've made. Great. I'm, I've been so excited to, you know, keep a foot of your guys' progress. I just, again, I, I'm always happy to see when a coach comes into him because you know that there's so many yeah. challenges to undertaking it and to see the amazing turnaround that you guys are doing with it again it's uh, just it cannot be commended enough and I can't thank you guys enough for joining me on the bullpen cafe today and before we leave we're actually gonna we got to try all the food so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna get a little bit of this corn and a little bit of these mashed potatoes and we're just gonna bring this all into nice one, one little barbecue feast Well, it looks great, Jovi. You were you were an excellent pitcher and outfielder. But you might be a better shooter. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me. Oh, really thank you so it. much, guys. Again, um, this is you know I'm I'm glad that we still haven't gone live yet because I know that once we do that, this would be an opportunity that we wouldn't get to do on an actual game day. So it's nice to be able to to open that up and be able to bring you guys in with all the anticipation of you know the exciting game ahead and yeah and again we just can't wish you guys uh enough luck I, i'll be rooting for you um i actually not sure if i'm gonna be able to make it to the game tonight my wife and i have like our first date night in months set up nice. so i think that you know we'll see if, if she's in the mood for football but if not we will be uh venturing out and about but again guys i just cannot be happier for uh for you guys coming to join me and for the job that you've done and i just wish you guys all the luck in the future um and coach evans uh i know that you will actually be coaching soccer as well in the in the winter right yes i've left uh San Joaquin memorial as you know i'm at madera south which used to be a league rival so i'll be coaching uh uh, the enemy, so to speak, except now I'm a Madera South Stallion, and I'm, I'm glad to be there. Great, great. Well, you know, um, I know that you have such an affinity for Spain, and one of the things that I have done on the grill before and I would like to do in future episodes is do a paella episode. Oh. So, uh, again, we're going to have to bring you back during uh, soccer season. Uh, we'll bring all that together. But, again, guys, thank you so much. We've got a great day here at the Bullpen Cafe. Uh, come with us again Monday. We'll have a brand-new episode waiting for you, and we'll see what comes up next. Again, head coach is Justin Garza, assistant coach Pat Evans from Sunnyside High. Thanks again, guys. Have a great weekend, and we will see you soon. Bullpen Cafe, centralvalleytalk.com. Thank you. <laughs> centralvalleytalk.com.